guys, welcome back to another episode of Handlebar ASMR. I'm a big music buff, and so sometimes I'll be listening to music, and I'll listen to the lyrics, and I'm like, wow, I didn't even know that that's what that was saying. And so I'll look them up, and I can have lyrics completely wrong, but sometimes we can actually get the entire meanings of songs wrong. So, in this episode, I'm actually going to go through and talk about some of these songs that a lot of us misunderstand the complete meaning of the song. And some of them are a little weird, but when you go back, listen to the lyrics, or look them up, you're going to see that, yeah, this is what they're actually about. So, the first one I'm actually going to start with is Semisonic's Closing Time. Now, if you've ever been a, at a bar at Closing Time, this is usually the song they kick on to usher everyone out. And so, it really sounds like it's about Closing Time at a bar, but the song is actually about a baby leaving the womb. Closing Time. Time for you to go out to the place you will be from. Closing time. This room won't be open until your brothers and your sisters come. Weird, huh? Another weird one is Bop by Hanson. It's a really happy song. Most people have heard it, but if you listen to the lyrics, you see that it's actually about the futility of love. And although the song may be upbeat and come across as playfully lighthearted, if you listen to the lyrics, they're a little bit darker. You have so many relationships in this life. Only one or two will last. You go through all the pain and strife. Then you turn your back, and they're gone so fast. <laughs> You're beautiful. Sounds like a very romantic song by James Blunt, but actually, the song is about a guy who's high as a kite on the subway, stalking a woman and saying this stuff right in front of her boyfriend. Uh, so the beauty kind of leeches right out of that, right? This is one of my favorites, actually. Semi-Charmed Love by Third Eye Blonde is about a couple on crystal meth binge. The two are uh, triggering words of this song that really gives it off is crystal meth will lift you up until you don't stop and then you get back masked. But it, it actually got back masked out in the uh, edit. The original edit goes, the sky was gold. It was roses in my nose. I was taking sips through my nose. And I wish I could get back there to that place. Back there smiling in the pictures that you take. Doing crystal meth will lift you up until you break. It's still a fun song. But when you listen to it, it's obviously about drugs and crystal meth. So, Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen. Most people think it's a very patriotic song about American pride when it actually cast a shameful view on how America treated the Vietnam veterans after the war. Every breath you take by the police, you'll hear this song played at weddings and stuff, and it's actually about a possessive and controlling stalker. Even Sting himself says he's called this song very sinister and ugly. So, every breath you take, I'll be watching you. TLC's Waterfalls. Uh, the song is not about waterfalls at all. It's actually taking on uh, sexual promiscuity, HIV, AIDS, and the illegal drug trade. One day, he takes a look at himself in the mirror, and he doesn't recognize his own face. His health is fading him, and he don't know why. Three letters took him to his final resting place. HIV. Pumped up kicks. Now, most people know what this is about, but it's funny because it plays at a lot of uh, high school proms back in the time when it was popular and everything like that. And when you listen to the words, you realize it's about a school shooting. So, the chorus says it all in Pumped Up Kicks. All the other kids with the pumped up kicks. You better run. You better run. Outrun my gun. All the 
herself has admitted that this song is about uh, her poker face is her own uh, experience with bisexuality where she has been with a man but she's actually dreaming or fantasizing about being with a woman hence she's got to put on her poker face hey y'all uh, by outcast now this is a really catchy song and it's about a profoundly unhappy couple that's probably about to go through a divorce the first clue is when andre 3000 starts talking about uh sticking through together because we don't uh, thanking his parents because they could stick it through together because we don't know how and if you listen to the lyrics you see that it's really about um, this very unhappy couple that's going through and about to, to have a divorce and it's like are we so in denial when we know we're not happy but I know you don't want to hear me because you just want to dance Jump by Van, Van Halen. Uh, it's a very catchy song. It's a fun song and everything. And it actually, the the reason it come about was because uh, Roth revealed that the idea came from him when he was watching the news one night, and there was a man about to attempt suicide on the news. This is straight from him. He says, "I was watching television, and it was around five. It was the five o'clock news, and there's." There was this fellow standing at the top of the Acro Towers in Los Angeles, Roth recalled. He was about to check out early. He was going to do a 33-story three, drop. There was this whole crowd of people below him saying, don't jump, don't jump. And I thought to myself, jump. So I wrote down uh, the beginning of the song, and it ultimately became a number one hit record. All Star by Smash Mouth. Uh, very catchy song. Most people know the lyrics to it and everything like that. But if you listen closely, you'll see that uh, Greg Camp, it's the band's guitarist and one of the writers of the song, says it really has a lot of elements in it about global warming and the ozone layer going away. So there's a little bit of a hidden meaning in that. And then Dolly Parton, I will always love you. Also made famous by Whitney Houston, of course. And it sounds like a really, really beautiful love song. But when uh, Dolly wrote this back in 1973, she meant it as a farewell to her mentor and longtime partner, singing partner, Porter Wagner. She played it for him as a way of breaking the news to him that she was about to go solo and their professional relationship was over. Or as Parton explained it, years later, it's saying, just because I'm do going doesn't mean I don't love you. I appreciate you, and I hope you do the, I hope you do great, and I appreciate everything you've done for me. But I'm out of here. And last but not least, Total Eclipse of the Heart was written as a love song between vampires. And the original title was actually called Vampires in Love. And if you listen to the lyrics, they're pretty dark and they fit the vampire motif. So that's just a few songs out there that have meanings we may not have actually associated with the song because they really, maybe the beat is different and it's really heavy meanings, but uh, like I said, that's just a few of them. If you have some that you would like to share, go ahead and put them in the comments and everything like that. I find this a very interesting subject. Like I said, huge huge music buff. I love music. I love everything about it. So you'd be doing me a favor if you'd done that. Anyway, that's it. It's a pretty quick episode this time. I know I'd like to say thank you for listening to me again. And I hope that you uh, join me for another episode of Handlebar ASMR in the future. Thanks again. 
subscribe. 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 subscribe.